Today on LiveView Mastery, we're going to implement a simple caching layer in Elixir using agents. We're going to discuss the most common scenario when you need to implement a caching layer like this. We recently built a feature in a Discord server where users could discreetly ask for moderation from the mods and the admins by messaging our Discord bot. So let me show you how that works. So say there's somebody spamming in the general chat and I need an, a mod to take care of this and you know either mute this user or ban this person. I'm going to message the bot and I'm going to say, hey, can you check general chat? There's a spammer. And this is going to create a channel that only the mods have access to. They're going to get a response from the bot saying, you've opened a ticket with the Ouroboros server. And it's also going to create a channel that the mods can respond to you. And this, what it's going to do is it's going to ref it's going to forward the response from the mods. Hey, I'm a mod. What the bot does is it forwards this message back to the DM. That way, the user and the mods can communicate discreetly without anybody else in the server knowing that this person is asking for moderation, which is really important. Now, the scope of why we need to build a cache, this is where it's going to start becoming important. The dot close ticket command, I can type that in any channel. Dot close ticket. And we need the... A database query needs to occur because there are multiple channels in this server, but there are only a few that are connected to actual people's Discord tickets because when you message the bot, it creates a Discord channel. So when I type dot close ticket, we need to know which tickets or which channels in the Discord server are actually connected to a ticket. So when I type dot close ticket in the wrong channel, the bot does a database query. It knows that, okay, this is not a ticket channel. You cannot use that here. But if I actually type that, or so say the mod is like the mod response saying, okay, I muted this. I muted that guy. The user gets that as a response. Okay, I muted that guy. The person responds, thank you. And then the mod then goes and closes the ticket. So they type dot close ticket. Now here's where it gets interesting and why we need to build caching for a feature like this, because we're doing a database query to check to see that the tickets in the database, which ones are connected to a ticket channel. So let's open up a new ticket with the Discord bot. It's gonna spin up a new channel. So let's just say this is a very uh, busy Discord server and a lot of messages are happening. So I'm gonna just type a bunch of messages. This is very common in a Discord server, right? Hey, and then I'm just gonna copy and paste and say, hey, a bunch of times. So there are Discord servers with hundreds of thousands of people in it. So even a message delivery speed of this is, is slow for a server like that. Now let's check my logs. Now, if you can see, I've, I've got logging where I've got a, the channel ID with which the message was sent from, which is this general channel. If we right click, we can go to copy ID. The ID of this is 7745. So I can see that the message came from channel ID 7745. And then I have an open ticket. The ID of that channel ends with 1518. So if we actually go to this open ticket, we copy the ID, we can see that its channel ID ends with 1518. This is how we know, this is how the software knows that when I type close ticket, it's able to send you an error saying that this is not a ticket channel, but when I type it in the actual ticket, one of the actual ticket channels, it will actually close the ticket correctly and delete that channel. And the reason why we need a cache is because if we're in a server with a bunch of different people in it that are sending messages, it's going to be doing a database query every single time that a message is in the server. This is very inefficient. We have another way. The problem that we have is that we're working inside of a functional programming language where state is not easy to come by. So let's look at the docs for Elixir itself. Uh, there is a abstraction that is very easily available to all of us as Elixir developers. It's called the agent. And let's review why this is necessary in a functional language like Elixir. So let's look at the docs, the trouble with state. Elixir is an immutable language where nothing is shared by default. If we want to share information, which is the information we care about here is which channel IDs belong to a ticket, which is stored in our database. If we want to share information, which can be read and modified from multiple places, we have two main options in Elixir. There's actually another, there's a third one that's not mentioned here, but the first, one's is, the first one is using processes and message pa passing. In Elixir, let's see, in Elixir, all code runs inside of a process. Processes are isolated from each other, they run concurrent to one another, and they communicate via message passing. 
Processes are not only the basis for concurrency in Elixir, but they also provide the means for building distributed and fault tolerant programs. So what we're going to be using is the agent. The agent is our simple. Uh, so of these three options that we have, which is using processes and message passing, Erlang term storage, which is an in-memory like database, which is outside of the scope of this discussion. Our third option is recursion. Our most obvious way to implement caching to reduce our need to have to hit the database all those times, every single time a message comes in, is we're going to use an agent to store which tickets, what their channel IDs, in a, just a simple list in memory and inside of an agent process. So here's what an agent looks like code-wise. You can spin up an agent by doing agent.start link. This actually spins up a process in the Erlang virtual machine, and it has an empty, and this function that you pass to it is the initial state of it, which is an empty list. You can actually go in, you can pass in the that original agent, and you can use the agent.update function to change the state of that living process in the Erlang virtual machine. So for this one, we're adding eggs to our original empty list. And so now we can ask the agent, okay, what's your current state? And then the agent will return, okay, I have a list that now has eggs in it. So if we do that in our inside of our, if we look at our code base, we have implemented a simple agent like this where there's a start link function where it will spin up an agent and it will uh, give it the an initial state of get text channels. Get text channels is our query that actually just hits the database and it checks to see which ticket or which channels. And so this is it right here, active text channels from ticket where the ticket is active, grab the ticket, the text channel ID. So the way that's going to look like if we actually ask the text channel cache its state. So the reason why I can call it by name, I can I can do this. I can do bolt.caches.text channel cache. dot text channels list it's going to give me a little list and as you can see as opposed to before we were hitting the database every single time now you can see that there's no database query because we're storing this in a long-lived process in the Erlang virtual machine and this is the current state which is there is one open ticket and by using the agent we're able to bypass the ability to hit the database now the reason why i'm able to call and if you saw in the example in the Erlang docs, you actually had to grab the PID or the process ID of the agent. We're actually calling the module name directly. And the reason we're, we're able to do this is because of this last part of it, where we're passing in this option of name. You can name a process. So we're giving it the name, uh, name of the module itself. So this underscore module syntax, we're naming the agent bolt that caches that text channel cache. This allows us to be able to make a reference back to the agent by name now we don't have to store the pid and you know what is the actual process id of our agent that or of our agent that's controlling the text channel cache we can just call this module directly and we can ask it for its state now if i were to shut the server down and start it back up i want you to observe that we're actually doing a database query to grab all the tickets that have an active uh, text channel in the database now the way this works is because we're in our application supervision tree, when the application starts up, so I, so I used a, a command, uh, an alias, but when I did IM, that stands for IEX-S mix. So I'm starting my Discord bot, and here at the bottom, I'm initializing the state of the text channel cache. I'm, it's coming, uh, when the Elixir application starts up, it's also going to be starting our text channel cache. And this syntax, what it does is it actually calls that first start link function which is going to initialize our agent, bring it up into existence. Our application supervision tree will make sure that it's always running. And we're going to be loading it with the initial state of all the text channels in the database that have an open ticket. And that's why, even though I'm starting up the application from scratch, I already have an initial state. And this is how you achieve uh, caching in Elixir. So what we're going to do is every time we create a ticket and every time we close a ticket we're actually updating the state so the code here is kind of complicated for creating a ticket so remember when we go in and we initially dm the bot the bot responds saying hey you've created a ticket in the ouroboros server the ticket that powers this is this ticket create module and if you check on line 35 check this out T text channel 
cache.resetCache. That calls this function on line 13 inside of the agent, which is going to update our state. So let, we're going to close a ticket. So uh, we're going to open up the close ticket module. And every time we close a ticket, it also updates the cache. So as of right now, there's one open. There's a ticket with a channel ID in the database. Now I'm going to go. I'm going to close my ticket. I'm going to type dot close ticket. That's going to call the reset cache function on the text channel cache. So that's going to now our list, which had an ID of a channel, is now going to become an empty list because there are no active tickets in the database. So if I ask the text channel cache, what is your list? You see how I didn't have to do it by hand. It automatically did it itself. I now have an empty list. If I open up a new ticket with the bot, it's going to update the state automatically. The reason why is because in the ticket create module, we're, we're telling the cache to update it. So the state of the cache is active tickets. When we uh, create a ticket, that cache needs to expand. When we close a ticket, that cache needs to re be reduced. And the way that's implemented in the cache is by calling the reset cache function. And all that's doing is doing the database query only at the particular times when the cache needs to be invalidated, which is when you create and when you close a ticket. And effectively, this is how you implement a simple cache in Elixir. This is how you get all the power of the Erlang virtual machine. Don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated by OTP. It is hard to understand, but it's very easy to do once you understand it. And I hope that this video has helped you.